In this video, we are going to look at a practice problem where we will comment on the solvency position of a company, which is the long term financial position of the company. On the slide, we have a list of items which has share capital to uh, uh, you know current liabilities, non-current liabilities, uh, you have fixed assets, you have uh, possibly short term assets, EBIT, finance costs, etc. So some details are given and we have to comment on the solvency position. So solvency position is a long term financial position. The first indicator that we are going to use uh, is uh, debt to equity ratio debt to equity ratio and this is equal to external external liabilities divided by internal liabilities the external liabilities is going to include both the non current liabilities and the current liabilities and the internal liabilities refers to shareholders funds and shareholder funds as we know is the total of the capital uh, preference capital, equity capital and reserves and surpluses, profits during the year, all the different kinds of reserves. Okay, let's just figure that out. So we are going to need uh, the external liabilities first. So let's look for that. Where are external liabilities? You have debentures and you have uh, creditors, bills payables and that's it. So these are the external liabilities. Uh, debentures is something that we've not discussed and I think now we should discuss it. Uh, the debentures necessarily are a kind of loan. Let's say this is the company. This is a company and company can go to a bank. This is a bank and take a loan. All right. So the bank says, all right, here is a 10 crore loan. You pay, pay me a 10% interest per annum or there are EMIs that you pay. Instead of going to the bank, the company can go to public. Company can do, go to general public here and say, we want 10 crore rupees. Okay. And this 10 crore is going to be raised through public. And you don't have to give us 10 crore. You can only give us 10,000 rupees, let's say. So uh, 10,000 rupees uh, per, uh, you know, unit of loan. So everybody can give us uh, 10,000 rupees if you like as a loan and all of this as soon as it sums up to 10 crore nobody else will be able to give us that loan. So all we are doing is you know instead of going to the bank we're going to the public and when you go to the public and you raise uh, this debt from the public uh, each unit of debt is 10,000 rupees you promise that we will pay 10% to you instead of going to the uh, bank or you will pay them 9%, maybe slightly less compared to the uh, what bank would charge. Uh, but you have opportunity to raise much more, uh, you know, higher loans compared to what you get from the bank. So these, each of these instruments is called uh, a debenture. Uh, in the international parlance, it's also called a bond, but bond, you know, is more used for the government uh, issuing this uh, debentures. So when government issues debenture, uh, it, these are called bonds. When the company issues debentures, these are called debentures in that sense. So uh, to sum up, debentures are the loans that are taken from the public. The company can raise money from the public as uh, through shares and also through debentures. The debentures have a fixed interest rate to be paid on, on them. The shares do not have a fixed interest. All right. So that is what debenture is. It's essentially a loan taken by the company. So there you go. Non-current uh, liabilities are 250,000 and current liabilities are 50,000. Total 3 lakhs. 300,000 is the uh, external liabilities. The internal liabilities are going to include the capital and reserve and surpluses. So the preference share capital, I think I've discussed the preference share capital before. The uh, it's same as share capital, but they enjoy certain, uh, the shareholders of preference shares enjoy certain rights over and above. They have some preferential treatment in distribution of profit. Uh, you know, one example was that they have a fixed return, fixed dividend, just like debentures as well. 
Okay, so preference share capital plus equity share capital plus all the reserves. This is what is going to make shareholders fund and this is what was external liabilities. There you go. So total shareholder funds com comes out to be 6 lakhs, 7 lakhs. So you have 700,000 here. There you go. The debt to equity ratio is 3 is to 7 or you could further uh, you know, simplify it as well. But what it means is uh, in the total capital of the company, total uh, you know, of the balance sheet, uh, total money invested, not the balance sheet, balance sheet will have other items as well. Total of the total money invested in the company, 30% is being contributed by the external people and 70% is being contributed by the internal people in the organization. So the question is, you know, how do you comment on this? What is an ideal ratio? Again, look at the top five peers or the industry average. Uh, but uh, I have discussed earlier that raising debt uh, can be advantageous for the company. And the reason for that is the, uh, say for example, a company uh, requires 100 rupees, you know, to be started. Uh, you can put in all of your 100, that is one option. The other option is that you put in 50 and you raise a loan from bank uh, worth 50. In which case your remaining 50, so this is you and this is from the bank. So this is your company which needs 100. So you can put in all 100 or you can, could put in only this 50. Uh, if you put in uh, uh, the 50 only, then you are saving 50 which could be you know, used elsewhere. But the business will go on. On the business, you will make, let's say, 20% profit. Uh, and uh, here, you will have to pay to the bank, let's say, 12% rate of interest. So this additional 8% also comes back to you as a return. Uh, so you know that is the advantage that you have uh, of taking debt. But how much debt should you have is a you know question which is answered, uh, which is a you know advanced topic in financial management, which is discussed in another course. However, uh, for now, if you want to say whether this is a good position to be in or, or bad position to be in, you compare it to previous years, you see the trend or you compare it to the competitors. Let's next look at another ratio, uh, which is called proprietary ratio. Proprietary ratio simply tells us the uh, shareholders funds contribution to the total assets of the business. Uh, we have both these numbers. Shareholders funds are 700,000 and total assets are given here. Total assets are 15 lakh. So 15 lakh. So 7 is to 15. Uh, that means, you know, uh, if we have to do the calculations, 7 by 15 will come out to be how much? About 42, 42 point something. So 42% is the contribution of the shareholders uh, in the total assets of the business. So that's how you comment on this, meaning remaining portion belongs to, uh, you know, is contributed by somebody else. All right. And finally, we have the uh, interest coverage ratio, which is earning before interest and tax divided by the interest amount, which has to be paid. The numbers are here. You have 50,000 and 5,000. 50,000 divided by 5,000 gives you 10. And the units are times. Which means you have earnings which uh, using which you could pay this interest 10 times over if required. Which is a very good position to be in. Means that you can afford to lose earnings, a lot of earnings and uh, you know uh, one ninth of the earning for example and uh, the uh, tenth part of the earning will still be able to pay off your uh, interest. So th these are three ratios uh, which we have discussed uh, that we use in commenting on the long term financial position of the business. There can be other ratios for example uh, you may want to know what is the contribution of debt to the total capital which is essentially the opposite, the complementary of this number, proprietary ratio. Uh, so you could do that. You could figure out this number, uh, taking all the uh, long-term debt and the current, uh, the total assets. Uh, you could be interested in saying, 
what is the ratio of fixed assets to the debt or to the equity again so the ratios could be manufactured you could come up with a new ratio if it is relevant to the business of course you can't just be making stuff up which gives you no information so whatever information is required accordingly you could create a new ratio but these are some standard uh, indicators which are used uh, by various business websites as we have seen on the or in the annual report of the company okay let me stop here i'll see you in the next video